What parasites do is they tend to find a host or find somebody that's prepared to take them in. Generally what they'll do is they'll, they'll camp out and live off our energy or our blood or our nutrient supply in some way and feed off us, which is really annoying, but also can drag you down and make you feel tired all the time. But here are the main categories. Uh, helminths are the main one that we're going to cover today, which is basically the worm type of parasites. What I'm going to talk about are the ones we want to get rid of and also where you get them from. So the worms are something we can deal with, something we want to deal with. Then we've got protozoa. So protozoa are single celled organisms and they're like a bit like bacteria, you know, like a, a single cell, but they are bigger and they have more of an organ structure. They, they're kind of like a, a, a living being or an entity, but as a large single cell. So that's a protozoa, and there's a few of those we'll talk about towards the end. And then there's fungi, which is the most common one that we have. I mean, we get the external fungi like tinea or athlete's foot, but the most common one internally is candida. Some of the really most common ones, and these are the worms that we talked about, they can affect, and they do affect, up to 50% of the world's population. And that's a staggering number when you think about it. And it may be worse in some parts of the world or some areas where there's um, less sanitation and there's dirty water and there's problems with you know, animals and human um, feces and sewage, sewage control and all that sort of thing. In some instances, it's only when you go outside of your hygienic environment that you're likely to catch these things. But the statistics are incredible. If you look at this, 3.5 billion cases of parasites uh, on an annual basis. So that is literally half the world's population. Mortality rate, 125,000 deaths every year, mainly from the infections caused by hookworm and roundworm. So how do we get these parasites? We touched on this already a little bit, but it's mainly through contamination. So contaminated food, particularly undercooked food. This is a really big thing, especially meats undercooked meats. So you want to cook your meat really well if you're wanting to avoid parasites. Poor control of human waste, malnutrition, so poor state of internal health in the body, poor hygiene, just generally being unclean, having dirty fingernails is a big one, uh, you know, bringing dirt and ground matter into the house, and careless food handling. So it's just handling the meat and getting the, especially raw meat, and getting that on your hands and getting it around your kitchen you can pick up infestation from that. Uh, animals, animals are a classic place to get infection. So not just from the animals themselves, but also from the meat. And here are the most common types. So roundworms being the most common, and these are the, the helminths, basically the whole category of worms. The most common roundworm of all is Ascaris. Then we've got whipworm, which is Trichurus, Enterobius, Vermiculus, or Pinworm and Strongyloides stericolis, referred to as threadworm. So those are the ones we'll touch on mostly. And these are the hookworms, tape and tapeworms. So here's the most common one, roundworm, Ascaris. So they infect the human gut where they live. And sometimes it won't cause uh, noticeable symptoms. So very cleverly, and this is what parasites do generally, is they try to cover their own existence and try to just quietly suck away at our energy. And so this is a classic case, the brown worms, the most prevalent worm. And when you've, if you've ever seen videos and you look this up on YouTube, you'll find videos of people with massive amounts of these round worms in their gut. And sometimes their whole entire gut can be filled with these round worms. And so it's amazing how, how long they can survive in the body without us knowing they're there but also they affect huge numbers of people. There's uh, 500 to 800 million people just affected by whipworm, for example. Pinworm, so this is one of the roundworms, one of the types. It's smaller, that's where the name came from, pinworm. The length of a staple, so they're only a, you know, an inch long at most. That comes from contaminated hands and bedding, clothing, and they can survive up to two weeks on surfaces. That means they can be spread around quite easily and picked up for weeks. 
restless sleep, abdominal pain, irritability, some of the symptoms, and the tape test. So this is placing tape around the anus in the morning and tearing it off and seeing if there's eggs on there because these are the ones that make the itchy bum effect. <laughs> so you definitely know you've got these if you start getting an itchy bum. And sometimes when people do a cleanse with herbs, with our parasite program, you'll see these pinworms come out in the feces and they can still be alive and wiggling around. It's quite disturbing to see it, but it's also really good to know that they're out of your body when they do come out. Most parasites will leave you feeling drained and tired and excessively hungry all the time and irritable. The most common symptoms. Whipworm, fairly similar, it's another roundworm, Trichurus trichuria. These are very similar to the pinworm, they just have got a bit more of a hook and a spiral effect on them, as you see there. And these are ingested eggs as well, so you pick up the eggs from uh, contaminated food or soil, and they hatch in the intestine. And then you can end up with dysentery and, and diarrhea and bloody stools. So that's a sign that it could be whipworm. Then we've got hookworm. So it's estimated that 800 to 1.2 million people are affected with hookworms. So you can see they all look more of a hook on them. And these are soil transmitted and they live in the intestines as well. These things can be passed around and picked up on the feet of animals that have defecated on the ground and then carried into the house. So this is another thing that you've got to look out for with animals, with picking it up from animals, is just letting the animals go outside in the dirt and then come back into the house because they can bring these things back into the house. So this is a really interesting one, tapeworm. I know that it's not so common, but you can pick this up in fish and pork, but particularly uh, pork is known to be the worst. So the tapeworm can become very, very long. And I'll just go down a bit further because it talks about the cases of tapeworms here. This one here, 6.2 meters, 20 feet, found by a doctor. So I've seen a case of tapeworms or a client of mine that had a tapeworm. And when he's done the cleanse, he said the tapeworm came out and it was longer than his arm. So not quite as long as that one. Then it's got this head and, and it's almost like a face on the end of it. And he said it sort of turned around and looked at him like, you know, you've kicked me out of my home. This is quite frightening when you think about it. And this is the one that can really infect the body badly. Ingestion of the eggs can cause cysterosis and neurocysterosis intestinal obstruction, so quite severe problems. But these cysts that are forming around the body can occur right throughout the body. And this is one of the biggest problems with worms is that these, these worms can get right throughout the body, that the eggs, the larvae can get around throughout the body and even get to the brain and into the eyes. Liver fluke. So this looks quite like a little leaf. They're almost like a little fish, these flukes. And here's an example of them inside the liver. And so you can get dozens or more of these in the liver and quite start to interfere with liver function. And there's several species that we can get of liver flukes. And freshwater fish is the most common way of getting them. And 35 million people worldwide are affected with these. It's particularly associated with developing gallbladder cancer. So quite nasty. And this is something also that, you know, doing a, a powerful uh, parasite program using herbs and liver cleansing herbs can help the body rid itself of liver flukes. And here's some others that you may have heard of. These are also quite deadly. Guardia. Now these are the protozoa that we talked about right in the beginning, like the large single celled organisms. It's one of the most common parasites globally that affects 200 million people every year. And this is often picked up in water. Cryptosporidium, and we see quite a bit of this one in another protozoa that we see uh, people that are around um, cattle and livestock quite often pick up Cryptosporidium, which is another protozoa. Tri Trypansinoma cruzi, which is called, causes Chagas disease. It's another protozoa affecting 300,000 people. Toxoplasma gondii, or you know, toxoplasmosis, which you may have heard of, that affects more than 60 million people. This can get into the brain, causing headaches and confusion. Scabies mite. So this is not a protozoa, but it's actually a mite. That one causes itching and it quite often infects around the genital area. So there's a nasty bunch of parasites. It's something that until you see it face to face, you quite often it just gets disregarded. And so doing a parasite cleanse is a really good idea to do once a year. Part of the herbal detox program includes a parasite cleanse. 
And we also do a, we do offer a deeper, bigger parasite cleanse program. And that's what we're going to start focusing on next week is the foods and the herbs that you can use and how they work on killing parasites in the body. And then lastly, we're going to share the herbal detox program and how that works. Because you can do this over six weeks to really cleanse parasites from your body. And if you think you've got a severe infestation, we recommend repeating it six weeks later. So you do two full deep parasite cleanses back to back over six weeks apart. And what that does is it helps get the incubation cycle of the parasites. So that's going to be really interesting and we'll come back to that next week.